it's early it's almost 7 a.m. here in North Carolina heading to Nashville today gonna spend the night and on the way to Wyoming this is my yearly October trip well I'm here to get my Scottish breakfast this morning good morning it's fall, mid-October here, and I'm headed back to Wyoming this year. With the weather change to cooler weather, I think we're going to see a lot of fall colors along the way. Should be an interesting trip. I'm going to take a different way to get to Wyoming this year. I think I'm going to be heading Interstate 70 through Kansas City, and then north at Salina up to Highway 80 should be a change probably seen this before but notice that preconditioning battery for fast charging when you travel and you set a destination a navigation here and you are set up to stop at superchargers the car actually pre-warms the battery to make sure that it's the optimum temperature to quickly charge as fast as it can so you get this notice here, pre-charging battery. Now turn right onto Parkside Drive. Just about here at the Knoxville Supercharger. Okay, we are hooked up here to 1B today. It's not real busy, it's good to hear. 139 kilowatts, it's not bad. It's kind of a high state of charge, but I'll take it says 35 minutes and then I unplug and move on down the road here. So one thing about a Tesla that you probably need to know, it is a very modern electric car. You can charge it at home, drive around 300 miles of range from your house. And when you travel, it's no big deal. Supercharger stations are located about every 100 miles or less mostly along the major transportation routes like Interstate 70, 40, 75, the whole works. There's thousands of them. Usually there's no wait. You can usually pull right in, hook up, get charged and move on down the road. One of the things that a lot of people have when they get an electric car is a range anxiety, which means just like you did in fossil fuel, when you would look at your gas gauge and find out that, oh man, I'm almost empty. That's okay. 
The electric car has the same effect. However, once you become used to it, it's no more difficult than it is a fossil fuel car. I know in an old Ford product that I had, an Explorer, when it said E, it was E. And you were very conscious of making sure there was always fuel in that vehicle, otherwise you'd be on the side of the road. Of course, you can run out if it's an electric car too. But the car complains and sends you messages and notifies you and even shows you the nearest location to charge the car. So it's very easy. At any point in time, if you get a call that you have to go to Nevada, you jump in your car and you start driving. You'll be within range of a supercharger and you charge along the way. There's never an issue. I'll get charged here soon in Knoxville and on the way to Nashville. So usually on my trips, I usually start editing along the way. I do most of the video here on my phone and I use my Apple laptop and uh, hard drive and the like. Anyway, uh, I learned this trick from Bjorn. Uh, you normally have a profile here with your name. Uh, my name's kind of hard to see here, but it's Dave, obviously. And if you go here, I set what's called office space. And what it does, it moves the steering wheel up and in, and it moves the seat back. So it works out very well in, uh, in giving me more room to operate and start the edit process here in the car. Okay, we are charged and ready to go. A shout out to Rody and Amy from Indianapolis. Had a great talk with them here at the Supercharger. I'm gonna get on down the road. about concludes today's video. I'll be up bright and early and headed up towards Wyoming in the morning. And if you'd like to buy yourself a Tesla, the referral link here shown at the bottom of the screen will get you a thousand miles of free supercharging. It is a very good deal. So thank you very much for watching. I'll look for you again and take care.